Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. I'm Emily, co-owner and designer at Rustic Passion Studio. Today I've got a tutorial I'm super excited to show you all. It is my Distressed Floral Boho Tumbler. And it's got lots of layers to it, but we're gonna go over all those steps in this video. Down below, I will have listed all the supplies I use, as well as a few discount codes. Um, so if you don't already, go ahead and like and subscribe, and we'll get started. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by prepping our stainless steel tumbler. First, we need to sand it down and remove any coating or debris that might be on the outside for our spray paint and epoxy to adhere to. So here I'm using the final sand from DIY Epoxy. I either use this or I will use a hand sander to rough up my cups. Um, I did take that little sticker off the bottom of the tumbler there. I am using a 20 ounce skinny straight from Maker Flow. And then we just go ahead and rinse that off and it has a detergent agent in it, the final sand so you don't need any extra soap. And then we just dry it off and go ahead and get to our spray paint layer. I used Rust-Oleum 2X Vintage Blush and we did two layers of spray paint over the tumbler to have a good base color for our glitter to adhere to. Next, I mixed up about five milliliters of epoxy um, and then I warm my cup up in my room and I only apply about one milliliter of epoxy to the tumbler for that glitter um, and then I just let it hang to dry. I no need to spin with just a little bit of glitter being used or a little bit of epoxy being used. Once the epoxy is all applied smoothly, um, you want to make sure that there is no lines or your glitter will show that once you apply it. Um, next, I am using the Champagne Dreams from Charm City Sparkles and Craft. This is kind of a champagne rose gold color that's really pretty um, and really sparkles under epoxy. It's one of my favorite colors from Charm City. And I just shake that all over the tumbler and then give it a tap to get the excess off and we are ready to go into our first coat of epoxy. Here I used probably about um, 20 to 25 milliliters of epoxy and I did use a fast set from Counterculture DIY and I applied two coats. So after this first coat I let it dry for two hours and applied a second coat. Once both of those coats were dry, I used a 60 grit sanding block to smooth my cup out. I really focused on the rims to expose a little bit of stainless steel there at the top. We want this coat to be nice and smooth as our next step we are going to apply a full vinyl wrap around the tumbler. So you want to make sure that there's no bumps or anything in your epoxy before you move on to the next stage. I am using a wet sandpaper, it's like a 220 grit I believe, to smooth out that bottom rim and all along the tumbler itself. With two good coats of epoxy over the glitter I didn't need to worry about sanding through or exposing any of that glitter making it turn silver. So I just really want to focus on getting this smooth since after that vinyl we will be applying spray paint. After the cup was fully sanded, I wanted to make sure it was washed and dried really well before we move on to our vinyl. The floral vinyl design that I used was this one from the Paper Star Studio and I purchased this and then I sized it to my cup and I will have the best I can those sizes that I warped the image to down below. For this cup, it was a straight, so I did not need to do any warping, but I also did some 30 ounce, 30 ounce skinnies and 15 ounce skinnies that I did have to apply a warp in Silhouette Studio for those tumblers. Then I just weeded out all of my vinyl just to expose those roses that we are going to apply. Once everything was weeded out, I 
got out my transfer paper. I like this big roll from expressionsvinyl.com. It's like a hundred foot roll of clear transfer paper for about $20 on their website. I just cut a big sheet and then made sure to um, press that down really well so that it all sticks to that transfer paper. After it stuck down well, I went ahead and cut around the edge fairly close. I wanted to make sure to get pretty close to the bottom edge of that vinyl as when I lay it on the tumbler, I'm going to stand it up so I don't want any extra transfer paper on the bottom that might push my design up too high. So once I have that, I pressed it down one more time after getting it all cut and then I flip it over to peel the backing paper off of the transfer paper. Now to apply this full wrap to my cup, I'm going to steam the cup on the edge of the counter and start in the middle of the design. And then since this is a straight cup, it's fairly easy. Um, I line that straight up and then I just wrap the edges around it. And then I press it down as I go to make sure everything adheres well. Once I get the vinyl fully wrapped around, I make sure to burnish it down really well with that scraper tool. You want to make sure everything sticks to the cup and not the transfer paper when you're pulling it up. The top and bottom of the rims is the most is the place you need to focus on the most where it's going to lift, especially if it's kind of overhangs a little bit. Now I made this design so that the edges would overlap slightly. Um, just so that there wasn't any kind of gap and that flower pattern flowed really smoothly. Once everything is adhered well, I just went ahead and removed that transfer paper. Um, you just want to be careful of any designs that start to peel up and make sure you get those pushed back down really well. Now I did multiples of these cups and I would reuse this transfer paper for three or four different um, designs and it would work really well. Once I got that fully removed, it leaves the beautiful floral pattern on the cup. And on those spots where it overlapped a little bit, I went ahead in with my X-Acto knife and just trimmed them up right along the edge of the vinyl and kind of just used that as a guide and pulled those extra little pieces off. Once I have the vinyl all applied, I go ahead and move into the next layer of epoxy. For this layer, I used approximately 20 milliliters to make sure I covered that vinyl really well. I only did one coat, and after this, we move on to the spray paint. So you want to make sure it's really smooth, and you're not going to have any lumps or bumps showing up through that paint. The first can I used wasn't working quite well, but I just used a Rust-Oleum. 2x blossom white it's a satin finish white i did about two coats of white to make sure it was fully coated and waited for that to dry after that i used this montana black marbling effects paint and for this i wanted to set up my spray tent as it kind of shoots out like silly string and goes all over the place um, but once you have that marble effect, I, you get to go into the distressing look. For this, I use acetone and alcohol. The acetone is really going to remove that paint and cut through it. 
and then the alcohol will just help clean up those spots after you kind of remove the paint. So first I went ahead and figured out where I wanted my decal to go. Um, that decal I was going to leave the largest white spot exposed and then just distress everything else around it that I wanted to. This took a little bit of time, so make sure you've got some time to focus on this part of the project. I did try another method after this, as that black paint will spread around, so you can't really go in and distress it um, and push too hard. But the, another method that I tried was just I sprayed everything all white, and then I distressed just the white parts. And I didn't have to be as careful. I could go ahead and go in and just go at it. And then after I would distress the white, then I added the black marble and then went back in and removed that black marble from those parts that already had the white removed as well. That seemed to make it go a little bit faster and I didn't have to concentrate or focus as hard on smearing that black paint onto the white. As you can see, this part took me the longest of everything to complete. Um, and after I was happy with how I distressed everything and removed the paint, then you really want to go in with that alcohol and wipe down all those spots of the exposed glitter. The alcohol is going to help remove any excess paint that might be on those areas that you don't want there to be paint. If you don't get that fully cleaned off, it will look hazy on your next coat of epoxy, and you really don't want that. Before you do the spray paint layer as well, you do not want to sand it at all. So you want to make sure that that epoxy layer is as smooth as can be. If you do need to do a little sanding, you want to go back in and do a final coat of epoxy. After I distressed that, I did go in and put on another thin coat of epoxy, approximately 10 to 15 milliliters this time. And then I was moving on to the water slide decal. Now since after the water slide that is my final, I will only be applying one more layer of epoxy, I wanted to clean up the rim and make sure I expose a little bit of the stainless steel tumbler at the top there. And then if there's any bumps around the cup, I would remove those as well. But I did not sand at all where that water slide decal was going as you will see that sanding underneath the decal. So don't sand where you'll apply your water slide. Only sand on the rims or if there's any little bumps anywhere else on the tumbler. Now this decal is one that I designed myself and it is available in my Etsy shop as an SCG and JPEG for download in there and I will have that linked below. So I went ahead and just soaked this in a little bit of a lukewarm water and then I get my tumbler wet on where I'm going to be applying it to. And my video cuts out here in a second, and I so I switched to a, another tumbler just to show you how I applied that decal. Once the water slide's ready to apply, I just slide it up a little bit and pull that backing paper off. And then I do stand the cup up so I can look at it and make sure that those words are going straight across. You don't want anything to be crooked. So I make sure it's straight and then I squeegee out a little bit of that water to hold it in place. 
and then I will lay it back down to finish squeezing out all the water. Make sure there's no wrinkles or any folds in your water slide. And you want to get this squeezed out really well and really dry. And then I will let these sit overnight um, to make sure that there is no water remaining so that when you apply your final coat of epoxy, it's not cloudy at all. And before my final coat, I make sure that the tumbler is level from a couple different angles. And then I went ahead and applied the quick coat from Counterculture DIY to my tumbler. This is just a polycrylic that will help seal everything in and prime it for your epoxy layer. Since I had some spots sanded, some spots smooth, and that water slide, I wanted to give everything a good smooth coat for that final layer of epoxy to adhere to. And then I just finished it off with about 15 milliliters of epoxy after this dried, and I was completed. Hope you enjoyed it.